this trip has blown my freaking mind. One of the best river runs you'll do anywhere in Australia. We're currently smack bang in the middle of an epic road trip between two of Australia's most populated cities, Sydney to Brisbane. We're not doing it on the highway though. Oh, she's not exactly the nicest of road that we're on, but it does mean that we're not down on that stuff. That's right, we're doing the entire thing off the blacktop. And what we find along the way, you'll have to see to believe. The road we've just driven in on is where they envisaged a Japanese attack to come from. One of the most interesting border crosses I think we've ever done. Business at the front, party at the back. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. What? What? Somebody get me a mirror. Check out your backyard. You might just be sitting on a gold mine. <laughs> and here's another tip. Take the route less travelled. Well, we're about halfway through this trip right now, and look, you know me, folks. Put me in a four-wheel drive and say, mate, go bush for a while. I get as excited as a kid in a candy store. I can't help it, and I'm not gonna apologize for it. This one was very much, in the planning stage, a backyard adventure. The variety of terrains and landscapes, from way up above a 1,000 metres above sea level, in the clouds, in the deep, deep, dense rainforest, right down to these beautiful sweeping rivers. Holy heck, what a trip, guys. Now, you might be thinking that I'm losing my mind because we're currently on the East Coast. Yep, the East Coast. But boy, oh boy, has this part of the world got some beautiful things to offer. And we're going to find them. Our route continues through the New South Wales backcountry and into the Styx River Forest. After that, we aim to push all the way to Queensland through the backcountry, completing the trip with a little known Queensland border crossing. And of course, we're doing all of this off the blacktop. Let me see if I can summarise in 15 seconds. World War II remains swimming, fishing, beautiful campsites. We've got a remote river crossing we want to do in order to get into a campsite that is utterly Instagrammable. Then, one of the best river runs you'll do anywhere in Australia. Copy? Copy oh. that. So much for not wanting to talk things up too much. I'm here for it. The first stop on this trip is a little spot I got wind of from a local mate. And he's pointed me to a hidden World War II site with some relics, well, you gotta see them to believe them. Now, these relics are hidden away in a tight part of this forest, and it takes you in a loop. So we're gonna leave the vans down the bottom to go exploring. Oh, oh. She's not exactly the nicest of road that we're on, but it does mean, oh, Jesus, she's rocky, that we're not down on that stuff. Geez, she's tight through here. You know, it's funny, since having this car, I say that a lot. Geez, she's tight through here. Tracks haven't changed. Tracks are exactly the same as they've always been. I just decided to buy a bloody black big car. <laughs> Along this route so far, I've been trying to pack in as much as I possibly can to do on the trip north, and so far, we've succeeded. There's one little item that I'm hoping we can find up here that I've been looking forward to for literally the last six months since I did my research on it. Now. This is gonna be a look back in time and a super cool little thing that I guarantee you, you haven't seen before. Sure enough, my research has led us to what looks to be the right spot. And it's on foot from here. No, we go that way. It's obviously been a bit of restoration out here because these logs, there's some OG logs here, but someone's put some new ones in. So there's obviously been some restoration works out here, as you can see. That's good news because it means we're on the right path. Here we go, here we go. All right, this is the first bit I wanted to show you. So this is the first piece of the puzzle, just here. This uh, day of Oak Health and Safety, you can no longer get in here. Oh, no, I closed her off. But we'll give you a quick look in there. Now, this is important. I'll explain why in a minute. But imagine where the cars are. The cars are parked just up there, directly on top of this tunnel. <sighs> That's where we parked the four-wheel drive, so that's super important. Remember that, okay? How would they have dug this tunnel out? With a spoon and a fork. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my God. What we're looking for is right here. And they are in perfect condition. Exactly where my research led me to believe they would be. <laughs> now, where they're placed is super important. Welcome to the OG World War II tank traps. 
Have a go at these. Let me explain. The road we've just driven in on, and parked on top of, top of the hill there, is where they envisaged a Japanese attack to come from. The tunnel I just showed you was packed with explosives. So when the tanks rolled down that hill, they were gonna blow them up. If that didn't work or they didn't get there in time, and the tanks were forced to come through here, try and cross over and head south down towards Armadale, Newcastle, etc., etc. These were put in place to hinder the tanks, and if they tried to go around, they were forced into this marshy area here where they'd get bogged and thus could be ambushed. That is why these bad boys right here are called tank traps. But just think about it, how utterly random. They picked a spot where the tanks were gonna come down, dug a tunnel, packed it full of explosives, and just waited for the day to come when the Japanese would invade us. There were a lot more of these. It wasn't just this little patch. There were a lot more of these, but it's so good to see they're all still intact. There's no graffiti on them. There's no rubbish and no, sorry folks, I'm not gonna show you where they are. And I know you will find them by doing a bit of a Google search. And when you do, please respect the area. we will stay open for everyone to see for years to come. The old tank traps. Of course we need to keep moving because we have a mission and that's to make it as close as we can to Brisbane on the gravel. And the road that takes us there runs along the mighty Styx River and its systems. I hope you're not afraid of getting your wheels wet. Mate, I'm actually a little bit excited about this. This could be uh, signs of things to come. Tell you what, if you just dropped me out of a helicopter right here, bonk, I'd swear I was in Victorian high country, complete with a crystal clear, trout filled river. Welcome to the River Styx. This is a beautiful spot. Isn't that gorgeous? The Styx River runs roughly 60 kilometres through the New South Wales Tablelands, flowing south. It's generally filled with crystal clear water all year round, and the route we're taking follows it all the way north, with a number of crossings to tackle. This forest is a stunning part of New South Wales and well worth a visit, with thousands of square kilometres of forest, rivers and untouched nature to explore. Won't lie, I enjoyed my time in the States. I loved it. I had an absolute ball, ripper time. I'll go back, I'll do it all again. But ain't no place like Australia. We are the luckiest country in the world, bar none. This place is, it's incredible. And it's four wheel drive enthusiasts triple that again because this place is unlike any other, unrivaled, unparalleled. And this trip for me has taught me so much about what's available when you're not looking at your bucket list destinations. You know, the big touristy ones? You know what, I kind of needed this. It's really lit a fire or added more fuel to the fire for me that Australia is just such an amazing place. So much diversity. In order to stay off the blacktop, it means our trip takes a little bit more time, which is totally fine by me. That's the beauty of van life and that's the beauty of exploring this great country. It also means that the days get away from us but according to my map, there's a secret little campsite that's begging to have some vans on it. Old uh, rock slide is a common bit of a work out here on the way down to this campsite. There are quite a few whoopsie doos, that's for sure. Yeah. But of course, nothing comes easy, and the track up there is a steep one. These whoops here, of course, are put in to divert the rain, because it buckets down out here, and when it does, it just floods down the road. So they put these culverts on the road so that they can divert the rain off back down into the valley, it just helps to control erosion. With the van on the back, you just gotta be a bit careful when you crest over the top of them and come down the other side, it can be quite steep, and you can hit your drawbar on them. Doesn't really matter, drawbars are tough as. You just wanna go slow so you're minimizing any damage. Covered a bit of ground today. I can't, uh, can't guarantee this spot's gonna be good down here, but let's go and have a look at it and just see if we can sneak our way in, because I wouldn't mind being beside the river, going to sleep with the sound of the burbling brook. Yeah, look. I'd like to uh, fall asleep just for once with a, you know, rolling river beside us rather than having to hear you snore from across the way. <laughs> Have a look at this and tell me this is not like a scene from the man from Snowy River. I would love to agree with you there, mate, but unfortunately I was born this side of the century. I'm, uh, I'm not sure I can actually relate to that one. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen the movie? You gotta watch the movie! <laughs> It's hidden camps like these that makes exploring this country in vans so worth it. To be able to pull up and in a matter of minutes have the vans set up on a riverside camp like this, well, that's living, if you ask me. Love a campsite with a specky view. 
freaking love it in here. I've got, it's like the TARDIS. I've got everything I need in here. Massive big bed, I've got two fans to keep me. I've got a digital TV over here so I can watch a little bit of Maeve O'Meara on SBS for the old cooking show. If you're watching Maeve, how are you? Shower and toilet in here, plenty of hot water. I've got 300 amp hours of lithium. All the lights I need, reading lights over here, storage down here, I've got food down there. However, there is a small bit of maintenance. Now, this caravan has got a really cool little gadget on here. This thing up here. It's called a dust suppression system. I won't go into the bionics of it, but basically, rammed air forces air into here, positively pressurizes the inside of the van when it's all closed up, thus making it virtually impossible for dust to get in through your seals. However, because of the ram air effect, it has to have a filter because any ambient dust when you're driving along would just flood in here otherwise. And so you've got to clean that filter out every now and again. Now, those of you watching along at home will notice that this is actually a replaceable paper filter, but I'm on my last one. So I'm going to blow this one out. They actually last for a long time, but this will give you a bit of an idea of what's going on up the top. <laughs> My advice, if you're looking to buy a van, doesn't matter brand, type, make sure it's either got a dust suppression system in it or you retrofit one. The difference these bad boys make is incredible. Of course, when you camped by a river and set up in record time, there's only one thing to do, and that's get the rods out and try and catch dinner. Well, you gotta be in it to win it. And from here on in, we're going to be following rivers all the way north. So, you're hard pressed to catch a fish by looking at a river. Now, if you folks live in this region and you do catch trout, etc., on a regular basis, I would love and need any tip you've got. In the comments down below, give me a tip. I've only ever caught about three trout in my life. What's the secret? How do I catch a trout? Plenty more trout in the river. There's none at all. It's all a conspiracy theory, just to make money for big corporations. That's a sad fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky we packed the fridges for this trip, because in true off-grid fashion, well, it's no luck on the trout fishing. But that's okay. I've got a backup dinner in mind that I reckon will do the job. What I've tried to do tonight is incorporate two favourites, Stephen Harley's. Steph's favourite is actually a new one. It's something I did on the Daly River. It was as simple as a tin of whole potatoes and I just fried them up. She went gaga -ga for them. So I thought tonight I'd take it a little bit next level for her. I'm just going to do a bit of bacon and some onion, then fry the potatoes up with a little bit of pepper and salt. For Harley, I'm going to do a nice big scotch fillet on the barbecue because I know he likes his steak. And that's it. Super simple. One of those camp meals will be done in 10 minutes. We've still got a long way to push tomorrow to see if we can even get to this little known Queensland border crossing. But between us and it still lies hundreds of k's of low range driving and river crossings. And you know me, I can't wait. Right now you can save up to 30% off selected snatch ranges. They've got outdoor gear, they've got clothing, they've got heaps of different things. It's the perfect way to prepare for your Easter adventure. So jump over to forwarddrive247.com and grab yourself a bargain. How nice is waking up next to the river. You know, a lot of people get all sort of uptight about towing a van behind their four-wheel drive. Here's my philosophy on it. Let's say we got down to this camp today and I needed to get down that rutted, gnarly track in order to go and catch, well, try and catch a trout. It's a fair way. I'm gonna go down there for a couple of nights and camp. This is how I do things. I'm set up back here, base camp. Everything's ready to rock and roll. Unhitch, 30 seconds. And then I go and I live out of the vehicle. So rooftop tent, I've got a cooker here, fridge, I've got lithium, 12 volt. Everything set up in the back of this so that I can be away from the van, super comfortable, and yet still come back to the base camp. That's why I've set up this side. Now, the beauty of the Mitz canopy is 
it's modular, meaning you can take whatever you like and move it around, or it's even designed to work with other products. For example, the Clearview drop-down pantry right here fits perfectly next to the Mitz pantry here. Millimetre precision. This side, as far as I'm concerned, I've absolutely nailed it. The other side needs a tweak. So, finally, after nearly two years, the Y62 is coming home after this trip, across the Nullarbor, four and a half thousand k's, and I'm gonna sit on a little stool, look at that side, have myself a brewski, and I'm gonna try and redesign the opposite side. Being modular, I can make it exactly how I need it. Now, you guys out there, you've all got touring setups, you guys are experts, what do you reckon I should do on that side of the canopy to maximize my storage and carrying capacity and also ease of getting into and out of things on that side of the canopy? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you come up with a cracking idea, I'll showcase it on the next off-grid episode. For now, finish me coffee. We've got a long, steep climb out of this valley. You know, I love that. Crank this big girl up. <laughs> Whilst we've been following the river so far, today's route truly marks the river run that takes us through the tablelands. We're not sure what lies ahead, but the map shows a fair few crossings along the route. So either way, we're in for a good time and we can see what these vans are really made of. Today, we're edging ever so slightly closer to the New South Wales-Queensland border. We're not doing it on the highway though. Got a bit of local knowledge and I've been given a river run. And apparently, never done it, I've seen some photos, oh man. We are in for one heck of a treat. But what a way to land us right on the border. The first stop along the route is one that I just can't go past without showing Steph and Harley. And if my calculations are correct and these clouds clear, shows a magical view at the top. That's spectacular. That's awesome. That is, holy bloomin' moly. <laughs> holy bloomin' moly. <laughs> That's sick. This is the Wollombi Waterfall, located in the northern region of the Oxley Wild Rivers National Park. After heavy rain, the water cascades over 200 metres over these dramatically beautiful cliffs and into the valley below. What a truly stunning part of the world. Of course though, we can't hang around too long because we've got an epic mission today to get as close as we can to the Queensland border. Hey, how bloody cool is this? So cool. This is the first campsite that Harley and I went to on our on our trip around Australia pretty much exactly 18 months ago to the day. To the day? This yeah. Is, this is where it all started yeah. for us. Yeah, and we just kind of coincidentally ended up here. This is sick. It just takes you back to where it all started. This region of inland New South Wales sees a lot of rain and it's evident by just how stunningly lush these mountainsides are. I think this is where the colour green comes from and they ship out green paints from here. This place is so bloody green. My in-car thermometer says it is 38 degrees out there. Yeah, look, the little D-Max is currently registering 40 degrees. That's about nine degrees hotter than I need to go for a swim. This is the Clarence River on our left. Got to cross it sometime, but I reckon we stop, have a swim, have a dip, get wet. That is very soft, that sand. Honestly, this is just one of those places you could set up shop for a week, kick back and relax. The best part, there's nobody around, and that's just how we like it. Oh, this is just what I needed. So refreshing. I think this is nice. Yes. Trust me. Have I led you astray yet? Oh, it was that time. I didn't even start counting. Oh, no. in the border. <laughs> Where we're going to camp tonight, we'll make this look like a C grade movie. Your audio. Trust me. Ooh, Trust yeah. me. Yep. Okay, the great man has spoken, everyone. Did you just put sand down my bum? <laughs> oh, Harley. Oh, that's a lot. So far, we've been successful in staying mostly off the blacktop and doing this road trip all on the dirt. And I gotta say, it's the only way I ever wanna see this country. 
The roads are windy and steep, which means the vehicles are working hard. But the 62, it's handling it with no issues. The D-Max, on the other hand, well, Steph and Harley have had to come up with some good old-fashioned mods that take me back to my days with Shorty. We've been driving for about 20 minutes, straight uphill. And look, the little D-Max doesn't love it, if I'm being honest. We're, in, we're getting near the red on the old thermometer gauge. Yeah, uh, she just keeps overheating, so we heat is on, bloody draw heat out of the engine. There's nothing better than driving with the heater on on a 40 degree day, sweating absolute bullets just to cool down this D-Max. I like to think of it as strength building. I reckon when we get around this corner, according to the map, there should be a bloody river down there. A bit hard to see at the moment. It's pretty dense, this bushland, but uh, hopefully we catch a little glimpse of something that might resemble a campsite. Better than that, have a look at that bloody river. Holy balls! Babe, hey, that's pretty special. Hopefully there is a spot with our name written on it, but Jesus, that looks good from up here. I can feel the old dad bod coming out. Woo! We Yay! love that <laughs> Sure enough, not far down the road, the forest clears and it looks like we're in luck. Well, folks, there's campsites and then there's campsites. Mate, this looks pretty bloody incredible. If you can get past the bovine there in front of you, we might be onto something. <laughs> He's a, the one in front of me has got little white markings on his face and he don't want to move. But what a, I wouldn't move either if this was my home. What a campsite. The drive-in was so worth it. This is the spot. What a cracker of a spot, and well worth a visit if you're in the area. The beauty of this place is you can find it yourselves on Wikicamps, along with thousands of other epic spots just like this. Just spectacular. I, I keep saying it, but this trip has blown my freaking mind. It's just the most amazing part of the country that I've never heard of nor been to. I mean, I've heard of it, of course I've heard of it, but I've never... I've never spent enough time down here. Look at this. Stephen Hales, they've got their, they've each got a job to do when we get into camp. They're kind of the dynamic duo of the team. They've, they've each got a side of the van they go to and they, they do their thing. I've just got to go it solo. First thing I do is, well, well, first thing I do is I, I go like this. Because I've only got short legs. Then hop in here. How cool is that? Your bloody roof goes up by itself. Then all I gotta do is pop around here and pop these little flaps up, and I am good to G to the O. Literally quicker than a swag. And I reckon there's a hole just there. That's about my butt size. Come for a walk, folks. I'm gonna take you inside. A humble abode. There she is, look. All we gotta do is just up on the roof. Look at them pipes. Look at that guy. Straight up. Other end. You ain't me to get up there on the bed. Oh. Roof up. Just a little time, Ben. <laughs> Wait to open these up. Get a bit of breeze through here. That's how easy it's done. Set up. Of course, no campsite setup is complete without one of these. Here you go, Doc. Oh, Froppy Dog! Cheers. Cheers. With camp set up, there's really only one thing left to do. Oh, look at that. Water glistening off it. Gin, oh. gin. <laughs> Research had led me to believe that this was one of the more stunning drives you'll do, but I'm going to go out and ledge here. We're nearly done. We are with almost within shouting distance of crossing the border. Yep. I oh know, it's, it's almost come to an end. Oh. I'm going to put it out there. This has been, of all the trips we've done, the most surprising by huge margin. Yeah, we, and we had no idea what to expect, no, did we? No. Today especially just blew me away. 100%. It's been magnificent. 100%. To think this is on the most populated coastline in Australia yeah. an hour in yep. on everyone's doorstep. Yeah, that's crazy. So yeah, taking the road less travelled. But I'll tell you what folks, I've said it a few times, explore your own backyard. Mm -hmm.
There is so much to bloody see. Absolutely. Woo, that was absolutely sensational. Folks, I've been meaning to show you this stuff for ages now. Ocean Outback Body Wash, it's soap. Now, I've been using it literally for about the last 18 months. What I love about it is you can use it in fresh water, of course, it's soap, you should be able to. You can use it in hard water, which we actually get a lot of hard water in WA, and you can use it in seawater. I've got one cable tied to the bathroom in the van. I've actually got one cable tied to the car here, and I've had one in the boat for, like I say, about 18 months. Biodegradable, so you can use it in the waterways. I'm not gonna have a problem with doing that. I use it all over from basically head down to the toes. It's the one-stop shop now for me when going bush or out to sea. I managed to wrang yourselves a bit of a deal. You can grab uh, one of these right now, save 25% off. Just use the code 4WD247. 25% back in your pocket. Trust me, guys, this stuff, you won't use anything else in the bush. It really is the bee's knees. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm about to go and give the old dad bod a bit of a spritz. <laughs> so you're all aware that Jawa have given Graham the top of the range fan. They've thrown the hamburger with a lot at him. Oh, and he won't shut up about it. Look, oh, diesel heater, this. Oh, powered roof, that. I'm sick of it. So I've stolen his remote for his roof. He's showering it at the minute. And now it's going down. Wait. Bugger him. <laughs> I'm Wait. sick of it. Fucking <laughs> hey, bike short. He can probably stand up in there without that up. Hey, wait, what are you doing? Oi, oi, oi. I'm short, but I'm not that short. <laughs> That's savage! I don't like it! <laughs> All jokes aside, this spot is breathtaking. But with the sun slowly fading, it's about time we crack a wine and pull out the Jawa kitchens to cook up dinner. My favourite meal, bangers and mash. Oh, nice. We are trying to mix things up. I am throwing in, you know, a bit of an alternative mm -hmm. on how you can do that. So we've got some apples, got some leek there. I'm gonna get this all frying. I don't know what the apple's for. What are you, how are you doing with apple? Is that, oh, the pork and apple? Yeah, fry it off ah, together. Ah, yeah, Gordon Just Ramsay. stick around, mate. I see a, what you're doing here. There's a few little surprises to come. We're gonna fry the apples off in the juices from the sausages, let those flavors mold in. Now into this, we're gonna throw in a little bit of hot English mustard. This is just gonna give it a bit of bite. We're gonna thicken it up just into a bit of a paste. We'll cut up the uh, the bangers over there, throw them in here. Our mash is all done. It's a nice doughy consistency. We're gonna use the mash here as our pastry for a pie. Fill it in with our bangers and mash saucy mix and then put a bit of a top on it. Three, two, one. Ah! Oh, Stephanie, you meant that on. <laughs> oh, that's... That has not worked out. Look, it's safe to say it's failed. Didn't work out quite the way we were hoping to. Sorry. I, we'll get these in, get the top on, uh, chuck some coals on and let it cook away for about half an hour. Holy! Hey. Look <laughs> Luckily for me, I, you know, Steph's never been all about the looks. <laughs> so that helps me out here. But, um, I'm pretty happy with how that's come out. You can see. Yeah, the taste. Yeah, yeah. this tastes delicious. Yeah. The apples are actually a really good addition to that. Good feed, mm. good fire, mm -hmm. great location. Great day. Yeah. If only the bloody trout. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you tell them, Gaz, you tell them. I'm going to throw a brick in the water tomorrow. <laughs> I might have more luck. Bloody trout, bass. I reckon freshwater fish don't exist. That no. don't be, exist. To be fair, I haven't seen you do great with saltwater fish either. Settle down there, Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> this is superb, guys. Honestly, well done. Thank Tomorrow's you. another day. Yeah. Let's keep pushing north. That's it. Cheers, mate. Mm. We've made it not too far from the Queensland border. Tomorrow's mission is to see if we can make it all the way there on the gravel and cross into the mighty northern state. For now, a few more wines and time to just soak it all in. What a trip this one has been. Northern New South Wales Tablelands has provided us with another stunning day in what is a stunning part of Australia. Now, of course, if we are heading into Queensland, I need to look the park. So Steph has volunteered to give me a little trim. 7.15 appointment. Okay, so are we going um, business at the front, party at the back? Yes, please. One dirty mullet coming up. Oh. <laughs> Rough on the gear. This is a bad time to show you I've never done this before. Oh, 
I'm a little bit nervous about this. So, how's your day been? What's yeah, been it's happening? Been good. Yeah. I just got back from holiday. Nice, where'd you go? I took the wife to Bali. <laughs> Righty, mate, we are done. Unlike any other barber shop, I've got no mirrors to look at here, so. Just oh, Harley, how, just how take Harley's word for it. What do you think? Looks good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. What? What? Done. Somebody get me a mirror. It looks, it looks great. great. Can I have a oh, Don't listen to his Holy laughing. heck. <laughs> that is a. <laughs> that, that is that a. That is a Malay. Holy. Full disclosure. I did not mean to go that fresh with Graham Spade. I'm not sure he can see it properly yet. <laughs> I think when he gets into a proper shower with the, with a mirror, he's going to be in for a rude it's shot. So sure. Sorry to his wife. <laughs> Nailed it. A sharp haircut means I'm going to be in business today, and we have one mission: get into Queensland and get as close to Brisbane as we can. Well, this trip, probably more than any other, has been all about maps. Every day, been looking at maps, both paper maps, digital maps, and help from a couple of good mates. Cheers, Kev. Oh, you beer, mate. Now, looking at my map here, I reckon I can get us across the border today on the gravel. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure whether that's a gravel road or just one of those minor, minor bitumen roads, but we're going to find out. So if we can get across the border on the gravel road today, that would be a big milestone. Queensland, here we come. While the end is still far away, it's worth mentioning how stoked I've been with how well the vans have held up on this backcountry adventure. They've been absolutely no fuss, no issues, and so comfy to live out of. A few kilometres later, Sure enough, the map hasn't lied. In front of us lies what appears to be a crossing into Queensland, and it's a quirky one at that. Back to the old home state house. We're back. We're back, baby. We're back. Back to the QLD. According to me map, this is it, folks. This is your last couple of breaths in New South Wales. Oh, we can smell that Queensland fresh air about to roll in. This has got to be one of the most interesting border crosses I think we've ever done. It's cute, it's rustic, it's, um, it's got all the vibes of an outback country town, doesn't it? <laughs> There's actually a little border post. What the hell? Get your passport ready and make sure you don't have any rabbits, apparently. So what officially am I now? I'm, I'm literally half and half. How does that work? You're a little bit of column A and a little bit of column B. Well, I got no rabbits. I got nothing to declare. I am officially in Queensland. Well done, guys. What a trip. Welcome back, my friend. It feels good to be here. This is 18 months, nearly to the day since we left. Brisbane on our trip around Australia, so it's great to be back. Welcome back to Queensland. Right out, we got a mile to cover. Let's keep punching into the great state. Of course, 18 months it's been since Steph and Harley left for their lap, which means this also signals the end of what has been another lap around Australia together. And what a journey we've had. I've said it before, say it again. I've seen more of Australia in these vans than I have for years and parts, like this trip, I just didn't realise were so worth a visit. Look at that, let's get right in there. Let's wash the dust off. Good timing, end of the trip. Kind of need a bit of a wash. Yeah. Hey, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but I am rapidly running out of choices when it comes to solo gravel here, folks. Yeah, unfortunately, mate, we are looking likely to hit some blacktop no. in the not too distant future, which is which is a bit sad. We've come a long way, though. It is a tad sad, but look, let's be fair, you can't drive into the heart of a capital city on the gravel. If you could, that'd be my kind of city. Right here, you're coming over a hill, and you're gonna see the bit we've been dreading. It's right in front of us. All good things must come to an end, and sure enough, up ahead, we run out of gravel. What a massive effort we've put in over the last week, and to end not too far from Brizzy is a damn good effort, if you ask me. How about this, though? How about this? Old oh, country pub. Go in and have a beer. It sounds delightful. Mate, that sounds like the perfect way to wrap up what's been a great trip.
Well, guys, here is a cheers, cheers. to what I reckon has been cheers, the biggest eye-opening trip I've done since we started off grid. Bloody oh. Absolutely. Yeah. Massive surprise, this one. Huge right surprise. Because when you think about it, all we've done is gone from Sydney to Brisbane, which I reckon today alone, yep. a few thousand people have done. Yep. yep. We've done it in the back roads. We've seen campsites, views, uh, we've gone fishing, we've done... It's been absolutely epic. Unbelievable. Yep. And it's not an iconic. It's not no. on anyone's bucket list. it should be. Yep. It will be now, hopefully. It will be now. I think it will be now. But folks, look, have a look in your own backyard, because I've got a feeling you are sitting on an absolute gold mine. So when you're putting your leave form in for next year's big trip, yep. maybe you can just turn left out of your driveway. Who knows? That's but for it. us, we've got one more night left. We're actually going to camp at the base of that mountain over there. Apparently there's a lake we didn't even know about. We're camping yep. there tonight. We have got so much more to come on Off Grid. That's right. it. And if there is anywhere that you think we should go, your backyard perhaps, exactly. let us know in the comments below. We'd love to come and check it out. Guys, what a trip. Cheers again. Cheers. Cheers mate. Catch us next time.